if you have ever watched a relay, like a sprint relay of 400 meters, four runners, they each run 100 meters each. Think about that moment where runner number one sets out, has an incredible start, you hope. And then as they come to the end of their 100 meters, their job is to make sure that they hand the baton to runner number two while making sure that they follow the rules, that they don't have any faults or infractions, and that they set runner number two up for success with a smooth and easy transfer. Runner number two runs their heart out. They run their 100 meters, and then as they come to the end of the 100 meters, they have to do the same thing. They have to set up the next segment, the next phase, the next runner for success, making sure that they dot their I's, cross their T's, don't have any faults or infractions, and then off number three goes. Number three runs their heart out because they know that to get to that end result that they want, the win, they have to set that final runner up for success. Because that runner is going to sprint their little heart out all the way down to the finish line to cross the finish line, hopefully in first place and score a win. Hey there, if you are currently living paycheck to paycheck in your travel business because you don't know where your next client is going to come from, you likely have one of two problems, maybe even both, a traffic problem and a conversion problem. You see, a traffic problem refers to the amount of people coming to your website to learn more about working with you, which means that the conversion problem is when your website isn't turning your website visitors into email subscribers, appointments, or paying clients. If you have a traffic and or conversion problem, your travel business is not going to survive. And that's not okay. And guess who is very much to blame? Your website. You see, a high converting website in the travel industry should be turning website visitors into paying clients with ease. If your website is not doing that, it is failing you. But there is a solution. Introducing Website in a Weekend, a transformative two-day virtual workshop tailor-made for travel professionals just like you. Arrive with nothing, leave with a breathtaking, high converting website. Yep, just in a week wind. You'll equip yourself with a crystal clear core message, a stunning visual brand, content crafted with high converting frameworks, and so much more. Early bird alert. Sign up by September 20th and get your website copy written for you by my team. Plus, I will personally pick, pay for, and place premium images on your website. Dates, mark your calendar, October 27th and 28th. Y'all, October 28th is my wedding anniversary. Show up. I'll be there for you. It'll literally change your business. Still unsure? Just ask Lisa. She transformed her website from meh into magnificent. And she says it was worth every penny. My site now speaks to those that I want to work with. I highly recommend it. Or ask Patty, who says, all thanks to you and your team, Sandra, I get so many compliments and new clients. I'm actually having a hard time keeping up with all the new bookings. So why wait? Elevate your online presence, attract ideal clients, and say goodbye to your website woes. Ready to soar? Join website in a weekend and let's make magic together. Head over to Travel Marketing and Media dot com slash website to learn more and book your spot. That's travel marketing and media dot com slash website. I'll see you there. What on earth does that have to do with travel? My friends, do I have an episode for you today? Today we are going to talk about the difference between marketing and sales. And we're going to figure out if you have a marketing problem and or a sales problem. 
And we're going to talk about how each of those first three runners is a stage in your marketing. And that final fourth runner is you closing the sale. This is a good episode. No cardio required. Okay, so the scene is set. You're standing in your best Lululemon and you're ready to work for the day. Let's talk about how the fact that these four runners are just like the three levels in your funnel and then the closing of the sale. So runner number one is the big, is the first runner, right? Number Runner number one is all about building brand awareness. Number two is all about nurturing. Number three is a proposal request, actually getting that, that, that lead to turn into a proposal request. And then there is this big handoff, that final handoff, the transition from marketing to sales, because runner number four is all about closing the sales. Can you imagine being at a track event where the atmosphere is thick with anticipation? Like you could cut it with a knife. Spectators are on the edge of their seat, the screens are up, the energy is high, the relay team takes their marks. Well, in the world of business, sales and marketing often operate much like a relay race. You see, each phase represents a leg of the race and each runner passing the baton to the next. So let's explore this analogy and understand those seamless relationships between marketing and sales. So let's go with runner number one brand awareness. So much like the first runner, the initial phase of the race is all about gaining momentum. It's about getting started. Remember, momentum requires movement. The starting runner doesn't just bolt off the line. They need to gather speed steadily. And in the business realm, travel marketing realm, this is the stage called brand awareness. It's at this juncture that the focus is on letting potential clients, potential leads who have never heard of you before, they are strangers to you, letting them know who you are, that you even exist, what you offer, and why it matters to them. Strategies in this brand awareness phase or top of funnel stage might involve running social media ads. They might involve joint venture collaborations with another brand. They might involve promotions and um, pay promotions like Google ads or putting yourself out in newsletters. But this is where people are going to be strangers and then they're going to understand that you exist because the aim, well, the aim is to get noticed and pass that awareness on to the next stage. And that is Runner number two, nurturing or the middle of the funnel. Now, after brand awareness, like I said, comes that nurturing phase, the middle of funnel. This you can think of as the second runner maintaining the speed and rhythm set by the first runner. The consistency set by the first runner. Here, the emphasis shifts from brand awareness to building a relationship with potential clients. So email marketing tailored content, fresh weekly content, whether that's a blog or an article that you're writing, putting up on your website every week. It might be a podcast episode that you're doing. It could be a video that you're doing. It could be webinars. It could be anything like that. Any kind of content that you create that helps show that you are a travel expert, a planning expert, right? It's not about you. It's about the destinations and experiences, that you can organize for your clients, that you can plan and research and book for your clients. You're no longer shouting out your name. Instead, you're having a conversation. So in the first phase about brand awareness, it's more like, look at me, look what I can do for you. Look what I can help you with. Look what how I can make your life easier. But in runner number two, it's really a conversation. That nurturing phase is a conversation. And It's understanding the needs of your potential client and then showcasing how your services fit into their world, right? And that part of the funnel, that nurturing part where you're putting out consistent content, like I said, it could be a podcast episode, a blog, an article or a video. For some people, if they're ready to go on a vacation, that could be a very short period of time. And I'm going to do another episode about how long marketing takes, how long 
it takes to build a pipeline, how long it takes someone to travel through that pipeline or around this race. And it's different for everybody because remember, some people are ready to take a vacation right now and they found you and it's such great timing. Other people, maybe they're on a vacation and they found you. Maybe somebody on a ship told them about you. Maybe they saw an ad that you were running on Instagram. Maybe they heard about you from a friend, but they just got back from vacation or their next vacation is not for another year or two years. And for some people, they have no intention of planning a vacation, no intention of using a travel advisor. They literally just heard about you and they're going to take a little bit longer in the funnel. And some people will be triggered by certain events that make that propel them faster to being ready to book. It might be school vacation. It could be um, finishing up at a job and having some time off before a new job. It could be a baby moon or a honeymoon or um, a, a special celebration or a birthday celebration. It could just be that they watched a movie that inspired them and made them think that they needed to go to Italy right now. Okay, so that's what runner number two's job is. It's all about nurturing and it goes from being a look at me, look what I can do for you to a conversation and really getting to know your audience and your audience getting to know you. Then the baton is passed off to runner number three and runner number three is all about the proposal request. By the time we reach the third runner, there's a buildup of energy and momentum And this stage is crucial because this is the bridge to the final leg. In business terms, this is when a potential client shows genuine interest for the first time. And this often materializes as a proposal request or an inquiry or a booking in your calendar or an email or a phone call. The marketing efforts are now refined and focused on specifics. So things like pricing and benefits and exactly how your service is going to help them. Or if they're comparing between competitors. And remember, your competitors are not other travel advisors necessarily. 99 times out of 100, they're not. Your competitor usually is DIY travel, right? So the audience is now super engaged. Your audience is super engaged. The audience of the race is super engaged, but the race isn't over because this is the handoff. This is the baton pass between the third and the fourth runner that is the magical pass off because this, my friends, is the transition from marketing to sales. You have your marketing hat on if you are runner number one, runner number two, and runner number three. And in the handoff, the transition, passing that baton between runner number three and runner number four, one of your most critical moments in a relay race is right here. Because this transition needs to be smooth. There can't be any fumbles. There can't be any trips. Trips as in falls, not vacations. Because without losing momentum to build up, you know, that's that's your biggest that's your biggest concern in this moment. Similarly, the transition between marketing to sales is very delicate. It requires very effective and clear communication. Because remember, when there's no clarity, there's confusion. It requires understanding and trust between both teams. Can you imagine how much trust runner number four has to have in runner number three that, you know, you've got my back. You're going to pass this baton to me smoothly that's going to allow me to race down that final stretch and runner number three has to have trust in runner number four because they're like I'm setting you up here I'm going to trust that you're going to take all the hard work that I've done getting you into this incredible spot to finish out so there's a lot of trust there in between both of them it's time for the handoff right so now let's talk about closing the sale runner number four the baton or the lead, is with the sales team, the final runner. This leg is about closing the deal. It involves negotiations, addressing specific concerns, and ensuring that this potential client feels confident about their decision. And like the last runner pushing with all of their might towards the finish line, the sales team has to harness all of the energy and groundwork laid by the marketing team 
to close the sale effectively. Now, if this was in the corporate world, these would be two completely different teams. It would be the sales team and the marketing team or the marketing team and the sales team. The marketing team cannot sell if they don't have leads. They literally need the marketing team to create brand awareness, nurture and drive inquiries. But once those inquiries and or leads come through, it is 100% the job of sales. Marketing is not responsible anymore. It is the job of the sales team. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, where are my teams? <laughs> I'm looking around the room. Teams, where are you? No, it's you. It's you. More than likely, you don't have a marketing department. You are the first runner, the second runner, the third runner, and the fourth runner. Okay? So just like that last runner pushing all their might towards the finish line. You, salesperson, now with your sales hat on, you're not thinking about marketing anymore. You're only thinking about sales. You have to harness all of that energy and groundwork that's been laid. So for the solo business owner, the travel advisor that wears all the hats, the relay becomes a really intense solo marathon. But you can't just think of it like running and doing your best. You've got to divide it up into those four segments. Because you face the unique challenge that wearing all four hats and transitioning from one phase to the next without dropping the baton is, well, listen, it's, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Because not only do you need to understand each section intimately, you have to understand the purpose for each. There has to be tactics for each, it has to be strategy. Then that strategy has to have tactics and you have to have ways to be able to measure if it's working or not. You have to develop and hone an entire diverse skill set for each individual leg. It's not just running for all of them. Each of those four different legs or segments has its own unique tactics, strategies and skill sets. And the key is to recognize the nuances of each stage, seeking learning opportunities and sometimes lean on external tools and consultants to strengthen any of your weak points. So you might outsource help. You might outsource expertise. It's a really hard race. It's, it really is. Honestly, I can tell you now. And I still do all four segments. I'm still all four runners for my business, even though I've grown an incredibly successful brand. But with dedication, understanding, agility, and just that, that comprehension, that clarity that you are all four runners and that you have a different role in each segment, you absolutely can cross that finish line victoriously. So from this episode, what do I want you to take away? I want you to think of your clients and the marketing and the sales as four segments to a race. I want you to recognize that each of these four legs of the race requires a different skill set from you. It requires understanding. It requires a strategy and tactics. And now I think that you can have a better understanding. Are you struggling in the first leg, the second leg, the third leg? Because if you are, you have a marketing problem and you need a marketing solution to fix it. Because if you don't have leads coming in, you're never going to be able to hand off to that fourth runner. That being said, if you have a lot of proposals and leads coming in segments one, two, and three, legs one, two, and three, but that you're just never winning the race, you're never closing the sale, then you have a sales problem, okay? At Travel Marketing and Media, we can help you to create incredible strategies and tactics and to upskill you and support you and you can outsource to us and we can be those first, second, and third runners with you. We can help you to, to, to win those legs, but you're never going to win the sale unless you have all four. So for runner number four, you are ready to conquer your sales problem if you have leads coming through, but they're not closing. And for that, we think you should go ahead, go and head over and listen and learn from someone who's a sales authority. And for that, we suggest heading over to see our friends at The Art of Selling. Glenda Beagle is a travel advisor turned sales expert because she really is very, very good at sales. And do you know how I know that? Not only has have we developed a friendship 
over the past, gosh, I want to say four years, but also I outsource Blender. When I need to really have someone good as my fourth runner, I will bring Glenda into my team. And Glenda has come in and done projects with us and done events with us where she is runner number four. So if you want to learn from a really good fourth runner, if you already have leads coming in, if you're do if you've got a strong leg one, leg two, and leg three, then go check out Glenda for leg four but you're not ready to go to her yet unless you have leads coming in, in which case you'll want to stay here for a minute. And then hopefully we can help you between the two of us, get you really, really strong for all four legs of the race. So I hope all of that made glorious sense to you. And I would love to discuss this more with you. Do you have questions about this? Where do you think that you are struggling? Is it the first leg of the race? second, the third, the fourth, come over to our private Facebook group, click on guides and go to episode 19, where you will find this conversation. And let's talk about it. Ask questions. Let's chat. I want to hear, come over and tell me which leg are you struggling with the most? Let's get it sorted for you. I'll see you in the next episode. If this podcast episode resonated with you and you'd like to hear more, head over to travelmarketingandmedia.com slash podcast to get notified about new episodes and also listen to any that you may have missed. And if you'd like to ask a question about this episode, you can send it there for me to answer on a live Q&A. We'll see you in the next episode.